Firstly, I would like to extend my heartfelt uh, congratulations to the organizers, the CIA Telangana, who have diligently brought, brought this discussion on the burning issues and uh, paving the path ahead for the future generations. Now, I will uh, cover two topics here. One is uh, about the uh, medico legal cases, and I share my I'll share my experience as a lawyer, as a attendant of patient. Luckily, till now I was not a patient, as an attendant of patient, and as a judge. And uh, the burning topic is uh, doctor patient conflict. Usually, these medical legal cases, the opinion of doc doctors, forensics doc doctors is very important. Usually, when uh, a complaint is lodged at the police station, it is called a report. Section 154 CRPC FIR is registered when there is an injury or anything related to medical evidence. First thing, the investigation officer does is he will refer the victim to the hospital. So, medical legal cases are mostly concerned with criminal cases, criminal investigation. There is another facet to medical legal cases which I will share with you. I will give you two examples. One is purely related to criminal case, another is related to service case. How role of doctor has become very significant and important for our day-to-day -day administration, not only for the bureaucracy, even for the judges for dealing uh, with their cases and uh, giving quality judgments, role of doctors is very important. You will understand with the illustrations which I am going to give you. One is, uh, I had been sitting with this uh, home portfolio for the past uh, three to four months. Earlier I was in this portfolio for six months, this uh, roster. Usually the cases which come up before the court are about uh, faulty investigation, police not uh, doing their job properly. Recently, I have come across one case where a person was injured. He had uh, 16 stitches on his head. So, Section 323 IPC deals with simple hurt. 324 grievous hurts. 325 grievous hurt with weapon. 326 Grievous hurt with sharp weapon, with intention to kill. So the gravity increases 323, 324, 325, and 326. Then the most, apart from uh, death case, culpable homicide amounting to death, punishment under section 302 IPC. Between these uh, offenses relating to injury and 302, there is another offense, attempt to murder 307 IPC. Now, this I know because I had been a lawyer for many years. Now, very difficult to remember the new provisions. The Act uh, BNS came into force on 1st July. So, I, I even today, if I refer to the new provisions, I go back to the old provisions. Very easy to remember. So, when uh, Victim came to the court. His complaint against the police was uh, it should have been a 307 case, attempt to murder case, because the injury was on the head and he had 16 stitches on his head. Then uh, I asked the government leader, there were serious injuries on the head. What was the weapon? He said, a blunt, it's a stick was used to hit it. Then I asked, why not 324 and why not? 307. It's a very delicate time between FIR and charge sheet is filed. There cannot be any law, conclusive law. Court cannot monitor the investigation. We cannot supervise the investigation. 
it is not our job. If something wrong is done, only then we can correct the police. Rarest of the rape cases, rape cases, honor killing cases, murder cases, or anything to do with uh, offenses against minor girls. We can, with our proactive approach, so monitor the investigation. That's the rarest of the rape cases. But in general cases, if we keep on monitoring, it will cause a lot of hardship to the system and also it will uh, cause the impediment to the investigation. It's not our job as I told you. Then the council argued saying that uh, when there are head injuries, where is the question of simple injury? I did not get a positive answer. Then uh, I adjourned the matter twice, thrice. The only argument of the government builder was uh, it is pending investigation. In the course of investigation, if the officer finds a grievous offence is committed and it's a serious offence, he may change it to 324 or 307. That is known as, that process is known as alteration of offence. They can alter the offence before charge sheet is filed. But uh, the counsel for the petitioner victim was insisting that no, at this stage itself it has to be done. You might be knowing why is he insisting? 323 is a bailable offence. No arrest. 307 serious arrest. Then 323 is triable by a magistrate. Small court. 307 a big court. A sessions court. See the difference. So ultimately what will narrow down is the role of police officer and I will come how the lawyers are connected or the doctor is connected with this. Since it was an interesting case, I called the investigation officer to the court. I asked him, why did you register it? I told him, forget about me being a judge and dealing with this case. If I am an ordinary person, I feel if I am injured, it should be 307. At least it should be 325. Or minimum it should be 324. Grievous, sir. He said, sir, I went by doctor's opinion. Doctor gave opinion saying that it is simple injury. Then uh, I was surprised. How can head injury be simple injury? 16 stitches on the head. Then I found out from the government leader why the doctor has given that opinion. Doctors also have some protocols. Outpatient, inpatient. If he is outpatient, simple injury. Inpatient, grievous injury. See how much difference it makes. The government leader says police have done this because on the face of it, it is only a simple injury. When I ask the police officer to explain, he says doctor. Doctor says yes. What can I do? He, has only, he, he came, I treated, I have asked him to go. Within two hours he went. So he is outpatient. He was not given admission in the hospital. It looks so simple when you see how complicated it is. And a person who has suffered this injury with 16 stitches, if he has to go to court, only, only to be told it is a simple injury. And you know what is the punishment? It can be fine also. Even if the case is proved, the accused is held guilty, he can be let off with a fine amount. So, as uh, the speakers before me have enlightened us, the preventive is, prevention is better than you and uh, uh, our IPS officer, Shilpa was saying, uh, she, she is ashamed uh, to see what, uh, about the, what has happened in Kolkata. See, though it is unfortunate, speaking about the Kolkata incident, uh, it is an aberration. What uh, we need to think about is uh, prevention. Mostly, Mr. Baskarov uh, has uh, referred to that. And also, Madam Christian, you just uh, 
react when an incident takes place? What are the preventive measures in place? If you see this uh, Porsche Act, like the prevention of you know, sexual harassment, so there is an internal uh, complaint committee. There is gender, gender sensitization committee. I didn't know about all these things until I became judge. And we never felt uh, such uh, need is there in a private establishment like that. As a, law, as a lawyer, when we have about 15-20 juniors, then clerks and drivers so on, so in our office, we never feel such thing is necessary. But when we deal with the cases, sometimes we also have this intuition. We feel the time has come for us to do something in the interest of colleagues, especially these lady colleagues. There was another uh, case. No, I just refer to and give illustration of a criminal case. Uh, let me tell you, because most of the lawyers feel uh, their role, uh, doctors feel their role is only related to criminal case so far as uh, this medical legal case is concerned. In service matter, one party approached the court. He is a PWD, person with disability. And uh, you might be aware. Uh, person is required to have 40% disability if he has to claim benefit of that act. In short, reservation. If he wants to claim a reservation under PWD Act, he should have 40% reservation. So, in tune with the provisions of the act, uh, all the state governments and central government, they have modified the recruitment. Rate. Earlier, I think it was 2%, now it is 4%. 4% quota is given for the disabled person. One person did not have one eye. I was informed some because of some tumor during his infant days, one eye was removed. So he had only one eye. He applied for his job. PH. This, uh, sorry, VH, visual handicap. In the recruitment, they have rules. Suppose they apply, they will say, go to so-and-so hospital, get yourself examined. The hospital will give a certificate. I will not <laughs> name the hospital. It's a government-run hospital because I dealt with that case. The hospital people should not feel something negative about it. It was a state recruitment. TSPSC, Telangana State Public Service Commission Recruitment. He applied for job of junior assistant in government. He was referred to the medical board of state hospital. Medical board gave certificate with 30% 30, 30 disability. 30%. Then this man uh, somehow, he was advised to go to Human Rights Commission. You know, many commissions are there. People have grievance. And uh, they can go to any authority. He felt there was violation of human rights because he was given a wrong certificate. He went to Human Rights Commission. Actually, the recruitment is totally a different process. If he has any grievance, he should have come directly to the High Court. He has gone to Human Rights Commission. And Human Rights Commission, without going into the facts, they said he wanted re-examination. He was sent to the same hospital. In the second uh, opinion, they said 60% is it. Maybe the constitution of the medical board changed. Same hospital, 60%. Then he went with the second set. First certificate, he went, he said, they said, you are not suitable. The disability is not 40%, so rejected. He went with the second certificate. They said, we have got nothing to do with the second certificate. Second certificate was not in accordance with the rules because the recruitment rules provided he, the TSPSC will refer him. He has to take a token from the TSPSC. With that token, he has gone to the hospital. That there ends the matter. Matter came before me one year, two years. Then example of criminal case I have given. Very difficult to find out. I am not an expert. 
luckily i was a bpc student in middle floor junior college i had doctor friends but as a judge you know judges uh, when we have writ jurisdiction 220 article 226 of constitution we have limited power while uh, you might be seeing in the newspapers every day judges name coming you think that judges have got lot of power but if you go by the settled principles of law we have very limited power only to correct the administrative decisions and tribal decisions of lower authorities and tribunals and decisions of the quasi judicial authority we cannot correct the certificates it's not our job it's job of expert if i have to correct the certificate and ask them to furnish another certificate i have to decide which certificate is a genuine certificate and which certificate is a correct certificate and that was troubling my mind i was adjourning the case adjourning the point is very simple to dismiss case it would not take 5 minutes for me because if i have seen due process of law that the tspsc has taken token gone there certificate given 30% i said come on at least i could have said in subsequent recruitment you take advantage of the 60% certificate and this man was an aggressive person he said uh, no justice so and so so and so he was shouting and he was crying in the court i thought something should be done because it's a genuine case there are two certificates natural for a person to react in that fashion and i thought this is not a usual case to be non suited for judicial review let me go deep into the subject i had my friend who is head of the department in one hospital working in haptamology department then uh, i took his advice i have sent these two certificate certificates i asked him what is the difference in these two certificates he said in uh, first certificate with 30% disability the doctor should have indicated i said with with specs and without specs he did not do that said a second certificate is valid according to it but you see my predicament what has happened i cannot uh, take into consideration second certificate third first second certificate is in its favor first certificate is against it so what i have done is to do substantial justice i said okay refer it to third opinion so that is how you know the matter came up before me luckily for him in the third uh, i think it is 40 or whatever it is. now he is eligible to claim uh, pwd quota you please try to understand as a judge did i have expertise in that and what would have happened if a judge who was not inquisitive he did not have that zeal to go into the subject i would only see the certificate only certificate and affidavit and counter affidavit is before me i have got nothing before so uh, with this background you understand how important your role is in the society in every aspect of life you play an important role and as one of our speakers said the hospitals and medical services provided have a impact on every citizen everyone is a patient directly or indirectly everyone is a patient we think about health on every day to day basis usually this uh, hospital uh, related matters the negligence matters earlier we did not have any investigation with the medical assistant excepting injuries and other death case or suicide case they refer it for sflo fslo opinion 
forensic science level. But other cases relating to medical negligence until Supreme Court uh, delivered judgment in Jacob Matthews case, nothing was in place in our country. When we compare the laws, the old laws and the new laws, one of the object of uh, enactment of three new laws is BNS and uh, BNSS and this evidence, new evidence has. It, the main object is to do away with the old colon, colonial laws. In IPC, you have several chapters. You have uh, chapters dealing with uh, offences relating to currency, offences against state, offences against women, offences uh, against body injury. There is a offence dealing with defamation, section 499 IPC also. Then death. Offence, something lesser than death, 304, part 1 and part 2. Intention to cause death, but death is not caused. Attempt to murder, but without intention to cause death. Everything is covered. But uh, one thing which surprised me, of course, it's very difficult. It, it, may, it may be easy for us to say this. It's very difficult for the parliamentarians to come up with a consolidated law and include some uh, chapter dealing with uh, professionals. Two professionals, of course, uh, doctors come in first order. You cannot compare doctors with lawyers. But these two professional professions are demanding professions. Normally, they say quid pro quo. You charge for the services you render. I can say without hesitation, and all of you will agree, the customer or a service recipient, patient, and in case of a lawyer, a client, last 10-15 years there is a lot of change in their behavior and attitude. I have seen, when I was young, suppose we had gone to some specialized hospitals, we used to sit in the common area. Someone in our family was in critical care or ICU. Only one person used to go there. They were not allowed. Strict protocols were there. Now, in groups, people will go there or stand outside there. A lot of aggression seen. Why? Because of economic empowerment. Lifestyles have changed. People have become very aggressive, demanding now. And many of them luckily have money. And with that empowerment, they also demand. They feel that I am giving this much, whatever demanded by the hospital. So, commensurate to that, you should provide services. Many of you may not be knowing, the situation of lawyers also is worse now. Not an easy thing. For every small lapse, the clients are going to bar council. Attacks are less. Tax are also there, but less compared to hospital study. Going to bar council, and you can understand a lawyer facing a bar council complaint, it's not easy for him. A very big trauma for him. With that stigma, he cannot efficiently work. It's happening. On a day-to-day -day basis, people are filing bar council complaints. Coming to doctors. I have dealt several cases on behalf of dental association, quacks. Many of the doctors who were running dental clinics, they used to train their dental technicians. Over a period of time, technicians, they started clinics. And the modus operandi was to go outskirts CTR and start clinics in districts. And because they are in the practical training, they also can offer best services. 
whether it is uh, extraction of tooth or any other uh, this uh, and i heard uh, one uh, lab technician has performed root canal treatment so we never believed but these things happened then the dental association came to me and asked uh, when we are going to the police station they are registering only one case section 420 i think i told the doctors 420 ipc it will not it's only for your moral satisfaction that's all nothing will happen in this case then i searched all the provisions clinical establishment by dental council so i did not find any provision and we gave a very big representation this my client's dental association they went to a went to the concerned minister he called for report from the police police said we cannot do anything because the act does not have teeth so in this uh, context what uh, i felt is uh, in the new act post uh, bns like ipc is a general statute penal statute even if uh, the parliament thought it was not necessary because the parliament law makers have to see see the public interest for them public lawyer lawyers and doctors and hospital establishments so when your interest is concerned it will be seen as an individual interest in contrast to your interest the other side of the coin are public public interest so for them public interest is more important that is probably the reason they did not come up uh, with the uh, strict measures and a special statute to protect onslaught and attack on the doctors and hospital establishments you might have uh, seen ipc comprises of several several provisions it deals with suppose you take uh, a case of rape rape of a man rape of minor woman all these uh, definitions are there in the ipc and punishment is there imprisonment for life is also there do you think when ipc was already in place and it was a old uh, pre independence statute and uh, had been in operation for so many decades they have not taken care of all the situations they have taken care laws are there laws were there implementation was not there it was not necessary in my personal perspective it was not necessary to come up with special statutes ipc itself was enough but the going by the number of cases and atrocities committed against uh, minor children they have come out with folk swat atrocity against deprived classes they have come up with scst act so they will be prosecuted for ipc offenses additionally these of the scst act and folk swat this is folk swat there are other non penal acts like uh, dvc act it is also a special act domestic violence act senior citizen act so i feel now time has come for enacting one new statute for protecting the professionals and professional establishments more specifically for doctors and medical establishments because your establishments are huge establishments you might be aware of one act known as the pdpp act prevention of destruction of public property act offenses are categorized as bailable offenses and non bailable offenses cognizable and cognizable non cognizable now madam christina has uh, spoken about it some cognizable is where police officer can arrest without warrant he does not have to wait for any permission from the magistrate 
to proceed with investigation. Immediately after the affair is registered, he can go and arrest. Cognizable, he has to take permission. Then bailable, non-bailable. Bailable is, as a matter of right, is entitled for bail. If he is arrested, he has to be released on bail. Let me go back to that illustration of 16 stitches on the head. Now that man is not even arrested, no arrest, bailable offence. Attack and damage to hospital establishment. <laughs> bailable offence. Threatening doctors. Only one offence, to my knowledge. 506 ITs. It is a bailable and uh, non cognizable offence. Provisions, I feel personally they are inadequate today to meet the requirement of uh, hospital establishments. So, these things uh, need to be uh, looked into. And uh, apart from having the statute and expecting many things from the state, I always feel as an individual, not I am not speaking as a judge, as an individual, having too much of dependence on the state and state missionary is not. If someone attacks us, suppose in the midnight someone attacks us, there are provisions of CRPs, you can use minimum force. There is something known as private defense. For every right, there is a corresponding duty that is applicable not only to the patients but also to the, to the doctors. We need to introspect what are these self-protection measures we are implementing and we are following. How many of us are following these self-protection measures? There was one incident of uh, a student in medical college. He was a PG student. He committed suicide. And immediately there was a call from that medical college. He was my client. I, I was a lawyer then. I said, uh, nothing to worry. 306 IPC, at the apartment to suicide. When I prepared the bail petition, by the time petition was to be filed, I received a call saying that, sir, we have compromised. We entered into compromise. We paid so and so crores. I said, for so and so crores, uh, compromise always is better. But I told him, if this incident recurs, then what are you going to do? Everyone will. Uh, Start uh, demanding money, blackmailing you. The letter I was informed that there was a powerful politician who came and they said, Sir, this person was married, so on, so you give some money. And I asked him, Why did you give me two crores, which was the sum paid as a settlement figure? And according to me, you are no way concerned. He's a PG student staying in the hospital, he was married. He did not pass in the first year. Something happened, unfortunate. See the timing. During that time, the, the admission process was going on. The relatives of the deceased who committed suicide and the local politician said, we will directly go to the newspaper and news. It will be reported. And we will see ensure that all the elect the admission process stops. Start. We go and give complaint to the convener, so and so. And this man said, This should be an alert call to all of you. So you. You want state to do everything, you want courts to do everything, you want lawyers to do everything. From your front, there, there should be some support to the system. That support system is not there. We should not depend. Too much of dependence on the system also is not good. Uh, countries like uh, Germany, France, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland. What is the interference of uh, state in uh, personal life of an individual? Not even one person. 
everything is in order. It does not have to go to the state. Everything is online. Everything happens. The routine man. Now here, from Aadhaar card, ration card, passport, everything you want, state machine. Very, very small thing. Two people fight a day near a water tank in a slum area. That complex goes to the police station. NDPS case, murder case also goes to the police station. Only one police station. And we have a lot of expectations from the police station. See, it all depends on us. Small cases we should resolve at our level. It's big cases. It's cognizable offenses. Police. Now, for, a, for every small offense, you go to the police station. Where is the logistic? Where is the manpower? One policeman and two or three investigation officers attached to one police station. They cannot uh, do efficient uh, job. You cannot expect good results from them. As uh, all of you know, every profession is prone to certain hazards. So prevention is better than cure. CCTV cameras, Mr. J Dr. Bhaskar Rao explained. You will be wondering, of course, whatever I am going to say, please don't have this uh, negative feeling. This is out of my experience. My nature, I am a positive person. I never uh, criticize anyone. And that is not my nature. When uh, Supreme Court made it mandatory for all the police stations to install CCTV cameras, I'll come to CCTV cameras being installed in the hospital establishments for the personal protection of the employees. You know what happens? Many of the parties who go to the police station and they are aggrieved by the police excesses and atrocities. They say, sir, I was asked to come to the police station at 10 o'clock. I was made to sit until 4 o'clock in the evening and uh, I was harassed. Then he was sent to the sent home. And people have uh, these smartphones these days. They are recording. Then the normal approach of the police, the defense taken by them is, no, we, no, he did not come. He came. Uh, we have examined him. I have asked him to go. There is one act. RTI Act, Right Information Act. Now, this is mandatory, mandatory requirement of uh, CCTV cameras in police stations. Will you believe? In many of the cases, the, the parties have sought for direction to the police to produce uh, the CCTV cameras. Still now, they have not produced in my court. One answer was CCTV, CCTV not working. In another case, current was not there, electricity was not there. In another case, it was dark. In yet another case, they said internet was not there. So, when we are like that, there is a saying, we get the politicians we deserve. Same thing. We get the doctors, we deserve. We get, get the lawyers, we deserve. That is an extension from my side. Doctors, politicians, everyone, they are out of our own public. They are not strangers, they are not alien. But when they occupy public offices, you have some expectations from them. That is, you are right. But what is your duty? Duty is, you should do something in aid of the public servants system and you should also have self-protection. If you don't have self-protection uh, and uh, have too much dependence on the system, according to me, uh, that is uh, not good because uh, many of the people are having good resources, well placed in the society like hospital establishment. Dr. Bhaskar is here, Kim's Hospital. Kim's Hospital <coughs> When you go there, sometimes when people used to talk about uh, tourism, I thought tourism means going on a holiday. I didn't know there is something known as hospital tourism. 
So now it has become a, or you know, that's a accepted norm now. Medical tourism, medical tourism. And there are uh, international wings in the hospital. Rehabilitation centers, hospitals. Nothing wrong. Initially, I had some reservations. I thought, why they should be distinct? But when people can afford best and specialized treatment, why should you not have? Otherwise, if you don't have that uh, system here, they will go to foreign countries. Better you have in our own country. 